Give me, I got one. I got, I got one listening appointment too. I got one listening appointment. One listening appointment for Rob. All right, guys, let's kick it off today. Um, so today's training, guys, script training. We do this every Wednesday uh, where we're practicing our scripts and dialogues and kind of going over strategy on how to be more effective when we're talking to people. Um, today's training is going to be all about how to follow up more effectively, right? Because we're coming off the new year. We're going back. People are getting back into the swing of things. So there needs to be a strategy when you're calling people, when you're texting them. There may be people that you've talked to several months ago. There may be people that uh, maybe they're old leads you're calling, right? A lot of us are calling from the pond. They came in six months ago, a year ago, or maybe someone that you met with before the holidays and they kind of took some time off and you want to get them re-engaged. So the whole discussion is going to be about how to frame those conversations, how to talk to people when you're following up. Um, understanding the approach and the angle that you need to, you know, uh, you know, hit these guys with, right? Um, and also thinking like, thinking like a consumer, right? A lot of times we wear our agent hat where we're thinking like an agent and we're not really thinking what is going to be attractive or enticing to the person that we're following up with, right? So that's what I want to go deep in. So this is typically what happens, right? Um, you get a lead, however it came in, whether you're you know, it's an online lead, whether it's a farming lead, whether it's open house lead, wherever it came in. And a lot of times we're calling and we're following up and we're just, we're doing the old script that most people do, which is, hey, it's Enrique PRG Real Estate. Just want to call and follow up and see if you're still looking to buy or sell or whatever it might be, right? That's usually what most people do is, hey, are you still looking to buy? Are you still looking to sell? Are you still looking to make a move for the new year? Whatever it might be. Now, I want to tell you guys why that's not effective, right? Because every single agent is doing that. Most agents say the same exact script, right? They're calling and they're just trying to go straight for the sale. And what we need to understand is that the sale does not happen on the phone. The sale happens when you meet them in person. What you are trying to do on the phone when you're calling someone, whether it's the first call or it's a follow-up call or it's a nurture, you are trying to demonstrate some sort of value to them and you are trying to book an appointment, right? So rather than trying to sell them working with you, you know, hey, let me help you buy or hey, let me help you sell or let me come over there and sell your house or let's go out and look at some homes. You need to sell the meeting, why we're going to meet and the value that they're going to gain when they meet with you, right? So it's, it's changing your mindset from you're not going for the sale you are selling the appointment or you are selling the meeting or you are selling the value that they're going to get from meeting with you, right? So that's, that's number one, um, is approaching it from a value-based uh, conversation, right? Now, we're going to go through kind of some dialogue right now on what is valuable to the consumer. So I'm going to pull up a quick little, just a Google Doc so we can put some notes down so you guys get a visual. And then we're going to frame out, you know, how we're going to, you know, form this conversation. And then we'll do a little bit of role play as well. Okay. So if you're a buyer, right, if you're someone looking to buy in this market today and an agent was calling you with some good news, what would be some good news that you would want to hear if you were a buyer? What would be something that would be enticing on, you know, to get someone to want to meet with you? Raise your hand or unmute yourself. Let's get some buy, you can buy the interest rate. Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. That you can buy the interest rate. Uh, buy down the interest rate. Is that what you what you mean? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so what we're talking about is uh, maybe a loan program, right? So special loan program. Uh, a lower interest rate right? Lower payment. That's really what that means at the end of the day, right? When we say buying down the interest rate, what we really mean is, hey, because of this loan program or because of this option, you can get a lower rate or a lower payment, right? So this right here, lower rate, lower payment, new loan program, this is what can be enticing to someone. Because let's say you talked to them six months ago and six months ago, the program wasn't there, right? Or there weren't as many options, and now six months later, 
we have these options for them that will give them a better situation when they're qualifying for their loan or when they're getting a lower payment, right? So this is one angle that you can, that you can uh, approach them with. Hey, I'm calling to give you some exciting news. Not, I'm not calling to see if you want to buy or sell. I'm calling because the last time we spoke, financing was a concern. I want to tell you about a new program that we have where there's lower rates and lower payments, or there's some creative options that we can help you with. Right. So you guys, I want you guys to see the difference in just using the old help you buy sell script versus, hey, there's some exciting news. This is what I want to share with you. OK, what's something else? What's another one for buyers and sellers? What's something else that would be attractive? I'm sorry, to a buyer. Let's just go a buyer. Kassan, what you got? Um, availability, because most persons are concerned about um, what is available in certain region or area. So if there is um, availability, whether in the Bay Area and so on, that would be enticing for them. Okay, so new inventory, right? So new inventory, um, new homes to hit the market, right? Because let's say during the holidays, the inventory was lower, right? There wasn't as many options, but now, hey, after the holidays, a lot of more people are putting their homes on the market. Yeah. So there's new inventory that wasn't available before, right? So this is some exciting news. Uh, okay, what's another one for buyers? What would be what would be something that would be uh, an advantage or enticing to a buyer? Price drop. Feel a good story. Like, hey, um, hey, David, um, I have a list of, you know, like, hey, David, I have some good news for you. I have a buyer that I just helped out last month with a very similar approach as you, and we were able to negotiate and do these, th these things for them. Okay. Some, some sort of like story. Okay. So at the root of that, right, it's like better terms, right? Like, hey, I was able to get them a good deal, maybe a discount, maybe better terms, uh, credits from the seller, right? So better terms. So discount, um, credits, right? Which would make it more enticing, right? No. Compared to before. Compared to before, this is what's going on now. What, what was and, I was, and I was also thinking of like, kind of using like, um, hey, I have, a, I have a list of homes that just dropped their price. And then and then I also have a list of homes that um, are on the point of dropping their price that have been sitting on the market for about 30 days. There you yeah. go, right? So a list of discounted homes, right? Which is basically you're saying there's homes that are on sale, right? It's like, what do... What do most stores do, right? They tell you about their new sale coming up. Hey, 25% off for the new year or 25% off in this month, right? They use that tactic. Think about outside of our industry, right? When you go to a shoe store, a clothing store, an online store, what are they always hitting you with that gets you to click and to go there, right? Discounts, sales, new inventory, uh, new season, um, new product, right? Better terms, buy one, get one free, right? What if you had like, hey, you buy this house, get one free, right? Like that, we would be doing that all day. We would be calling people and telling them about that, right? So list of discounted homes or about to discount, right? Maybe you have some inside information. Maybe you fell out a contract and you know this home is going to go back on the market and they're going to drop their price because the appraisal came in lower. That's great information to entice someone with. Okay. Um, What's the last one? There's, there's one more that I'm thinking of. What else you guys got? Anything else you can come up with? What about off-market off market homes? Homes that they don't have access to, right? Like, hey, I have a list of off-market homes, right? I know of two homes that are going to go on the market in the next 30 days, but we could potentially get you in the door before they hit the public, right? So off-market home represents exclusivity, right? People always want to know about the exclusive shit, right? Like, why do you think like Supreme, who follows Supreme, the brand, right? Why are they so hot? Because they're always dropping these exclusives or there's a limited amount. And that's all part of their marketing strategy, right? To create scarcity and create urgency, right? Exclusivity, limited, uh, you know, you get first access. There's only 300 made, but they're freaking hell expensive, right? But that gives people the feeling of wanting to get in before everyone else gets in. Dewey, what you got? I saw your hand raised. 
would, would letting the client know that um, we have like 400 uh, five stars on like, um, or, or five, we have a lot of five stars, would that apply to our client? So letting the clients know about your rating or your track record? Or, 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 or reputation as a, uh, as a company, would that advice like make them really, like, you know, like us more? Uh, you're echoing, I think, because someone else is not muted. But what Dewey is saying is, no, is I'm mute. Oh, no, never. Yeah, what Dewey is saying is if you tell someone about like your track record or your ratings, hey, we have 400 five star reviews, would that be something? I think that's something more you're going to talk about when you meet with them, mm -hmm. right? But I don't necessarily think that's a hook or an attention grabber to get them to meet with you up front, right? I think that's going to be part of your package when you meet with them on the step two, which is the appointment. So remember, like we're, we're trying to form these things as attention grabbers, hooks, things that are going to entice someone to say, oh, okay, let's go meet, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, one thing just to go a little deeper with this, like when you're talking about new inventory, just saying I have new homes hitting the market may not mean much to someone, but if you get specific on how that home is going to meet their criteria, right, then that can be enticing. Because let's say you have a client that's looking for a specific type of home in a specific type of neighborhood, or they need it to be a five bedroom with the pool, and there's not a lot of five bedrooms with the pool. Then when you have specific criteria that they've been looking for, that can get them to want to move mm -hmm. forward and meet with you to go see that home, right? So I would say specific needs of the client because you'll have some clients that are like hey um i'm gonna sell my house and buy a new one but i'm only gonna sell and buy if i find the exact home i'm looking for right i need it to be this this and that it needs to be in this area that's the only reason i would ever make a move right so if you have a specific uh a client that has a specific need and you get something that meets that boom, you're going to want to call them and, and be all excited about the good news, right? Okay, let's move on to sellers. What would be enticing information for sellers? If I was thinking of selling my home and you were calling to follow up with me, what would be information uh, that would be useful to me or valuable to me? How many buyers you might have available or your size of your network of buyers okay yeah so buyers looking for your home right for your type of home <clears throat> which is basically going to be uh if we summarize that that's demand right you have demand you got hey i got 10 buyers that are actually looking in south san jose where your home's at for homes that match yours there may be and ability to connect up one of our buyers with your with your home. What else? What's something else that buyer that a seller would view as valuable or enticing? I guess what they're getting the value that they're getting for their house. The value of their home, right? So let's say there's a new a new sale that you know of that just happened because you got to understand like we watch the market every day. But a seller may not watch the market every day. They're not on Zillow or they're not doing a, a CMA or an appraisal on their house every single day. We know when stuff goes pending, right? We know if we, if we um, you know, keep our eye on a certain neighborhood or market, or we know that market, we know this home just went pending and they had 10 offers, right? So that means there's nine other buyers that are out there looking and we know that that house is going way over asking. So new sales information that affects their value, right? That's enticing. Hey, I wanted to tell you about the home down the street. I don't know if you saw it. It's just like yours. I put an offer for another client. They had 10 offers and it's going 100,000 over the asking. I'm not sure if you knew that, but that's directly going to affect your value. Right, which means right now may be an opportune time for us to you know take a look at your situation, right? That's in that's that's different than saying, hey, just call to see if you're still looking to sell, right? You see how that's way different, right? Um, what else?
Here's one. What about changes in the market or the economy, or there's some upcoming things that may affect their neighborhood? Like, for example, when Google announced that they were going to build all these homes and the whole Google thing, right? Or they're going to build their whole uh, Google place downtown. What happened to the values over there, right? They went crazy. They went sky high. So people were using that information to get people to sell. And that was driving up the demand that was driving up the prices, right? Where the angle became call everybody in the neighborhood. Hey, Google's looking to buy. Google's looking to buy. Now's a great time to sell because, you know, people are willing to pay, you know, top dollar or Google might buy your house from you and pay top dollar because they're looking to build their, their campus there, right? So this can be like outside, uh, info that affects their home, right? Um, new like tax legislation, right? There's gonna be some people where they're in a situation where you know they're looking at paying a lot of taxes when they sell. And if there's new laws that come out or new things that come out where they can um, save money on taxes or transfer, you know, like the, what was it the Prop 60 or Prop 90 for people who've been in their house a long time and they can sell and transfer their taxes? That's something that might be valuable, right? We can't just assume that every seller knows that there are these special tax programs that you can save, you know, a huge amount of money on your taxes or transfer your property taxes as well, right? You can avoid capital, capital gains or you can transfer over your property taxes. So, that would fall into like some outside information uh, that affects their home value, um, laws that give incentives. Now, for a lot of sellers, what most sellers are concerned with is they want to get the most amount of money for their home. And they also want to get the, uh, have it done the smoothest and the easiest possible right? Those are the two main things, right? If someone's selling, like the ideal situation would be, I don't have to do anything and you drop millions of dollars on my lap, right? So anything that makes the process smoother right? Less resistance, right? Or gives a guarantee about that right um right that's valuable so if you have a cash buyer looking for a home just like theirs and they're willing to just give them a great cash offer and the seller doesn't have to do anything they don't have to put their home on the market they don't have to stage it anything like that now that may be enticing for a seller to at least meet with you and explore the option remember back to what the goal is is we're selling the appointment right we're not trying to make the sale over the phone. This is all about following up and trying to be more valuable when you're following up. But you, you can use that as leverage to get in front of them to go over their options, right? So, hey, Mr. Seller, we spoke six months ago. I want to tell you, since we last spoke, there's this new program we have, or there's this new cash offer option that we have that may be something that you'd want to look into. And I'd love to come talk to you about and at least give you some more information you know, to see if that's a right fit. And basically what it'll allow you to do is have a smoother process. Um, Cause I know that was a concern for you, not wanting to have a bunch of people coming in and out of your house, right? Let's meet up and let's at least go over the option and see if it's something that you want to look into, right? So what we're doing here, guys, is we are creating the framework, right? Like these are all different things. And if you see, there's probably five or six most common ones on each you know, thing for buyers and sellers that we can approach people with, right? So when you understand these things and you can learn these different angles, these are going to apply to 90% of the people out there, right? So your job as a salesperson is to understand human psychology, understand what makes people want to move forward to at least talk to you or at least meet in person or at least set up a Zoom call or at least do a consultation what are things that want to, that, you know, that will entice them? What are hooks? These are called hooks, right? Hooks are incentives that will want to move them forward. 
Okay, I'm gonna stop right here because uh, I wanna make sure everyone understands this before we move to the second part. So who has any questions? Um, I looked in the chat, actually, I wasn't seeing that. Price reducing discounted homes, yeah, updated market report. Yeah, those all tie into, you know, telling them about their value. Does anybody have any questions about why we want to approach it this way versus just calling and saying, hey, you know, this is Teddy. Are you still looking to buy or sell? Do you guys understand the angle, right? Do you understand why it's important to approach it this way versus just saying, hey, let's buy and let's help you buy and sell? Okay, perfect. Now, let's talk about how you can actually apply this, right? And this can, this can be applied whether you're on the real estate side, whether you're on the lending side, it's the same thing, right? There's certain things that you can contact people with and give them, you know, tell them about the new, new programs, new incentives, um, new reasons for them to, you know, book a call with you. So let's talk about now how we will apply this, right? We know these are the points, but how do we now apply it, you know, in what we do every day? So there's two approaches, right? Like a lot of us are making calls. We're following up on a phone call. We're calling a list of leads. We're calling a pond. We're calling people back. Or some of us are also sending text messages and emails as well, right? So you can do it in both aspects. And I coached Dewey on this last week when he was, um, when he was talking about, he, he called me and he wanted some coaching on just his follow-up and you know, he's making a lot of calls, but he doesn't see the calls going to the place that he wants them to go to. And do we unmute yourself real quick, bro? Mm -hmm. So do we, I, I remember on the phone when we talked last week, um, what did you tell me? Why, what was the approach that you were taking before? Before my approach would just uh, do a search through a PowerPoint and then just give him a call like, once every like two three days or once every week um but i felt like i was just waiting for them to message back on firepoint saying that they interested at one of the home that i sent them and i keep waiting and waiting and I, that was my method and i felt like maybe there's something wrong that i did that that that's not working um in terms of that or maybe i'm not professional enough or something like that so i reached out to you and uh, I think your method is very helpful. I, I try it and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep trying uh, your method and then I'm going to do my own search for whatever they, they, they want and then just text them or send it to them directly. Got it. So, so to summarize, guys, what Dewey was doing is he put the clients on a home search, right? He's just sending them properties. And then he was in the mindset of like, hey, if they see something they like, they're going to click on it and they're going to, they're going to call me and say, Hey, I'm interested in this property. Right. Does that happen? It happens sometimes. Right. But not often because you got to remember that people searching on homes, searching for homes or looking at properties being sent to them. They're on Zillow. They're on Redfin. They're getting properties from you. At the end of the day, when you send someone homes from your own search portal, they're not necessarily going to click and say, Hey, you sent me this home. Let's go take, take a look at it. The reason that you send them homes is just one tool to keep you top of mind with these people, right? It's just one more thing that you're sending them that reminds them, hey, it's Dewey. Hey, it's Dewey. Hey, it's Dewey, right? So I want us to get out of the mindset that, hey, I send people homes so that they click on it and they tell me which home they want to see. I want you to now switch your mindset to the reason I send people homes is because it just reminds them that I'm here, right? When I talk to them in person or over the phone or I follow up, that's when I got to get really specific about what homes we're going to go look at and stuff like that. So the advice I gave Dewey was if you have really, really hot buyers, for example, you need and you know they're hot and you know they're going to transact, it's going to be worth your time to look at look through some of the homes that you sent them to do a search and to figure out hand select properties that you think they would want to go see based off what their criteria is based off what their needs are right and it goes back to this approach that we're talking about right of there has to be something enticing right so remember we talked about for a buyer specific criteria so let's say dewey has a, a lead that he's been nurturing their budget's 1.5 million they're looking for a four bedroom two bath in south san jose 
Dewey now should spend, if he knows they're hot and he knows it's worth his time that they are going to transact, he needs to now spend time searching for those homes and picking out the right ones so that when he calls the client or messages them, he can say, hey, Mr. Client, I wanted to give you some exciting news. I saw a home. This is the criteria. I think you're really going to like this one. It matches all the things you were looking for. Uh, do you have some time to go tour it this weekend? right? Today, tomorrow, whatever that might be. You see, that's a lot more of a specific approach than just sending them properties and hoping that they get all your emails, hoping that they look through every single home and hoping that they click on one or say, hey, go take me to see this home, right? Now, are you going to do that for every single lead that you have? You're not, right? Because if you have a bunch of leads that you're working, it might not be uh, you might not be able to do that, but if you have your short list of hot clients, right? Maybe ones that you talked to before the holidays and they kind of took a break. This is now your time to spend, to go through that list and start hand selecting properties that you can entice them with or figure out what's the angle that you are going to approach them with. Dewey, what do you got? Um, I also got uh, a little bit feedback uh, or not feedback, but advice from Rob. He said that there's a lot of client in the past that I don't follow up anymore. What I can do is I can do a quick search on uh, MOS and then just send it to them. Say, hey, I just come across my mind and I, I was thinking of you. Uh, I know you were looking for something like this. And um, what do you think? And then he, 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 he told me to try that method, too. And that could be like another way for a client that you haven't reached out in a minute. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice, right? So that approach there is more for a client that you haven't talked to. This is now re-engaging a client, right? So we have different ones. We'll have clients that we are in communication with, right? We have been talking to them and maybe they just kind of went a little idle or they ghosted you a little bit or they took a break, right? And then you have clients where like that lead came in a long time ago. They probably don't even remember you, right? You haven't talked to them and you're more trying to re-engage them. Especially like if you're calling from the pond and you don't have an existing relationship with this client, it's a little colder, right? So that approach where you can look through their, through their history, see what homes they've been searching on, pick a random property that sort of meets the description of what they were looking for and send them a picture of that property, right? So what I told Dewey is, is I gave him a text message, um, format, right? Like it's sending texts like that is also really effective because when you send a text, boom, they're going to look at it. They're going to open it, right? Versus you send an email, it may go into spam. You give them a call. They may not recognize your number. They may not answer. So let's talk about, you know, how we would do that in text. So let me pull up this format here. So let's say this was a text message that we send. There's going to be an intro, right? And this is text messaging an old lead, right? Or re-engage, right? They don't know who you are. So like Liliana goes into the pond, she's calling old leads. She doesn't have a pre-existing relationship. How does she approach this old lead with a text message that might give her some more success? So there needs to be some sort of intro and I'm gonna show you exactly what I told Dewey. Um, the format would be the top section, right? Would be, who you are and remind them of maybe the last communication. So, right, and this could be a short text, right? It doesn't have to be a long text, but just a quick first line like, hey, John, it's Dewey, uh, PRG Real Estate. We spoke six months ago about your home search, right? That could be your first line. Because remember, like, he may not remember who Dewey is. If Dewey just calls him, hey, John, how you doing? It's Dewey. John might be like, Dewey who, right? Like, I don't know who you are. So whether you're calling or whether you're texting, it's the same mindset, right? You need to quickly remind them of who you are and I guess what that last message was, right? What the last communication was or how you got in contact with them. This is 
just kind of the opener, right? The body of the message, let me move this down to another page real quick. The body of the message would be the middle part, right? This is now where you're gonna include uh, your enticing message, right? Or your hook, right? So it'd be any one of those ones that we talked about up top, right? So if you know this buyer was, you know, worried about inventory, or you know they were worried about, you know, the price or whatever it might be, you need to now pick what's your angle that you're going to hit them with, right? Based off the last conversation. So if in the last conversation um, they were looking for a very specific home, then this is where I would put that. Hey, I wanted. To to let you know about a new property that just hit the market. Uh, it matches all your criteria when we last spoke. And then insert some sort of picture, right? So what I said, this is like a text message, right? So I would insert a photo. I wouldn't put the property address. I wouldn't put all the information about the property. I would just put the first photo of that, take a screenshot, drop that photo in the message. And then I would say something like, wanted to let you know, dot, 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 right? And put the, a quick little message. Want to let you know about this property that just hit the market that matches your criteria or wanted to let you know about this property that I think you'll like and they just, they just lowered their price, 100000 right? Or I wanted to let you know about this property that's off market. It's going to come on the market. Want to show it to you before it hits the market. You see how now what I'm doing is I'm just picking from one of those hooks that we established at the top, right? So depending on the conversation, you're going to apply that hook. And then the last part is going to be your call to action, right? So this is now where you are offering the next step, right? The next step would be Quick phone call, right? Quick phone call. Uh, quick, sorry, quick phone call to tell you more. All right, it can be um, consultation, right? It can be um, tour the property. Right. But essentially what that is, is you're trying to move it towards some sort of appointment. Right. Now, remember, if you if you haven't talked to this lead in a long time, they don't really know who you are. The easier that you can make it for them to meet with you or talk to you, the better. Right. Because like, let's say I haven't talked to this lead in six months and I'm trying to book. I'm trying to say, hey, you don't really know me. I'm just following up with you. I want to tell you about this new property. Uh, do you have time for a 30 minute, you know, zoom consultation? If I'm that buyer, that seems like a lot, right? That seems like, Hey, I kind of don't really know who you are. You want 30 minutes of my time. I got to jump on zoom. Right. But if you're like, Hey, do you have a five minutes to chat really quick. I want to tell you more about this opportunity. Five minutes to chat on the phone is a lot easier to get from someone than saying, hey, let's jump on a formal consultation. Now, when you talk to them on the phone, then you can try to book the consultation, right? But remember, the whole point of this is we're following up, we're re-engaging with leads, and we're trying to get them to move forward to the next step, which is either getting on the phone with you, then you can take them to a consultation, meeting them at a property, right? But I would always try to do the path of least resistance, right? You have five minutes to chat. I can, you have a quick five minutes. I can call you now and tell you a little bit more about the property. Then on the, then on the phone, you can, depending on what they say in the conversation, then you can say, hey, let's go tour it. Hey, let's meet for a consultation. Hey, I want to tell you, you know, I think also there's this new program that you might want to learn about. You know, I can get you on the phone with my lender. But do you see how you got to go step by step, right? Instead of just 
giving them that initial call, of, hey, you still looking to buy or sell? Let's meet up for a consultation. It's a lot harder to do that and pull that off than, hey, I wanted to tell you about this discounted home. Do you have five minutes? I can tell you about this list of homes that I have, right? Can I call you? What's a good time to chat for five minutes over the phone? And I can tell you more. We are using this as bait, right? You're throwing the bait out there. You're getting them to bite. And then from there, you can take them down the line and go to the next step. All right. Questions, guys. Who has questions? Um, I want to stop right there because I know this is a lot of info. Any questions, comments? We're going to spend the last couple minutes doing a role play. We're going to role play this now. Okay, who wants to be my volunteer to role play? We'll go through a couple of them. We're gonna give, we'll give a few people a chance to volunteer. This is going to be role playing like as if you're calling them and following that format, right? Intro, the hook in the middle, and then the call to action. Teddy, let's go. Okay, so Teddy, what we're doing here is I put appointments in. Okay, go, go, go back to the FR one. You're calling an old lead, right? The the scenario is this: you're calling an old lead. Um, go to uh, I can hear Rob talk. Um, we're gonna use the intro. Okay, scroll down. Right? Tell them who you are really quick. Remind them of the conversation, and then you're gonna throw some sort of hook in the middle, right? Based off what you research, based off the last conversation, the last note in the system, what is your angle? You're choosing an angle, right? There, your call to action, right? Do you have five minutes to chat about this? Or do you want to go take a look at this property? Or do you have 10 minutes to jump on a quick Zoom and I can show you a little bit more, right? Now you want to set that every time because you guys are <laughs> Uh, we're trying to establish the program. Now, Rob, I can hear him in the back in the training. You finish those. Episodes. I can hear you in the back. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so, so Teddy, you're calling me, Enrique, right? The note in the system was I was looking for a specific property in South San Jose. I needed a four bedroom, two bath. There wasn't a lot of inventory, you know. So you're calling to follow up and tell me the good news about a potential property, right? That's your hook. And the goal is you're trying to get me to maybe go tour this property with you, right? Okay, so ring, 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 hello. Hey, Enrique, this is Teddy with PRG Realty. We spoke a couple months back about a property in South San Jose. I actually came across some off-market properties. Do you have some time to take a look at this list with me? Um, okay, stop right there. So let me, uh, let's, let's give you some coaching on that. So intro, right? Teddy, PRG Real Estate. We spoke, you know, a few months back about your home search or about a property. That's great. In the body, I would maybe get a little bit more specific, right? I would, in that hook, I would say, hey, uh, I was calling you because I know of this certain property that's coming on the market, right? It's in South San Jose. You know, give me like, give me a quick little, uh, quick little rundown of it, right? It's in South San Jose, four bed, two bath. Uh, I think that's what you were looking for last time. And I want to tell you a little bit more about it. Do you have five minutes to chat? Something like that. Uh, okay, let's start. Try it again. Hey, Enrique, this is Teddy with PRG. Uh, we spoke a couple months back. I just want to, I was giving you a call because I have this off market property that meets all your criteria um, in South, South San Jose, four bed, two bath. Do you have some time for us to take a look at it? Uh, okay. So remember, we're kind of working through this together right now. So what I would do is maybe a quick little pause, right? Let them acknowledge who you are. So let's role, let me role play it with you. So, so I'm calling you, Teddy. So ring, ring, ring. Say hello. Hello. Hey, uh, Teddy. Yes. Hey, Teddy, this is Enrique, uh, PRG Real Estate. Not sure if you remember me. We spoke several months back. Uh, looks like you were looking for a property. Um, do you recall us talking? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, great, great. So, hey, I'm just really quick. I was just following up to give you some good news. 
I came across this property that's off market, meaning it hasn't went on the market yet. It's about to go on the market and it's in South San Jose, like you were looking for. And it's a four bed, two bath, which I think is what you were looking for last time we chatted. And it's, it's really nice, man. So I wanted to tell you about it first. Um, do you have a couple minutes to chat about it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Now, now Teddy, so let's stop right there. So what I'm doing, right, is I'm, I'm setting that up so that now I can start asking more questions, right? Because I, I got your attention now, Teddy, right? You're like, oh, yeah, you have five minutes to chat. So then what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to start, start kind of going through the LP Mama again, right? I'll start asking some more qualifying questions. So, Teddy, hey, um, I know it's been a while since we've chatted. You know, are you, are you guys still looking to make some moves this year or potentially get something? Yeah. Okay. So Teddy, would, would your client only say yeah? So be a real client. Like what oh, would your, your client say? Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're still looking. We're, um, if, if everything makes sense, we'll probably make the move. Okay. Okay, great, Teddy. So yeah, like I said, real quick, I just want to tell you about this. I have a few other ones that are coming up too. But what I wanted to do um, is maybe take you out to go see this one um, and tour it, you know, and then we can catch up and kind of go through your criteria again and kind of see what you're looking for. Um, Cause I am coming across a lot of hot opportunities, you know, now that the new year is approached. Um, do you have some time to take a, a look at this one this week or on the weekend? Yeah, this weekend uh, works fine. Okay. Boom. So now I booked the showing appointment, right? So what I want, what I want you to take away from that Teddy is um, as you go through this dialogue, like to make it more conversational, you're going to have to pause and like let them acknowledge and talk and stuff like that. So let's flip that, let's flip that around and, and try to do it more in that style. So you're calling me, ring, 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 hello. Hey Enrique, this is Teddy with PRG. How are you doing? Um, good, Teddy. Uh, oh, uh, we, we spoke a couple months back about a home search. So I was just giving you a call because I came across this off market property and wanted to give you a heads up first. It, it was meeting all your criteria. South San Jose, four beds, two bath. Is this still something that you were looking into? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. We we are still looking to buy. We kind of took a break during the holidays, but I think we're going to start looking again. Awesome. You know, how does your weekend look to, to possibly tour this property um, this weekend? Um. Yeah, I might be able to tour it. Can you know? Can you tell me a little bit more about the property? Yeah. So this property is. Um, I, okay, so we'll stop right there, right? So um, you would then go into telling them a little bit more, right? But but I want you to compare the first time around versus how you did that conversation right now, right? The second time around, it was a lot more conversational, right? It was paused and it was coming from a place of more curiosity and informative instead of like just going straight for the appointment, right? So remember, if you haven't talked to a lead in several months, you're going to have to kind of drag it out. You're going to have to build a little more rapport. You're going to have to talk a little bit more and kind of pause and stuff like that. You can't just go straight in for the kill, right? So make it a little more conversational, make it a little more friendly, make it a little more curious. Like, Hey, just checking, were you guys still uh, looking to make a move or, you know, you know, how, how you guys doing on that? Right. That gets them now like opening up to you and, and telling you what's happening. And then from there, you can kind of navigate the call. Uh, all right. Good job, Teddy. Um, let's go on to someone else. Who else wants to role play this real quick? We've got a few more minutes. Dewey. Okay. Dewey, different angle. So you're calling me because I'm a home seller, right? I was thinking of selling my home and you got some good news that there is a home down the street. They just accepted an offer. You just talked to the listing agent. They got 10 offers and it's going a hundred thousand over the asking and there's other buyers looking in, you know, that might be looking in that, in that area, you know? So this is great news for your home value. I'm not sure if you knew about that. Want to let you know, um, you know, I wanted to see where you, you know, what you guys were, were planning on doing, or if, you know, maybe I can come by and take a look at your property and give you some information. Okay. All right. You're good. So you're just basically telling me good news about a new property down the street mm -hmm. that just went pending and give me a little bit of detail and then 
kind of ask me where I'm at, see where, see how that's going. All okay. right, ring, 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 hello. Hey, is this my Enrique? Yeah, yeah, who's this? Hey, Enrique, this is Dewey. I believe we talked a while back, uh, two months ago, uh, where uh, I believe I called you and we, we were talking about you selling your home. Do you remember me? Uh, yeah, 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 I think, think I remember you. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have exciting news for you. Uh, I just came across this home uh, near where you're, you, uh, same street where you're living, and I believe they are. Uh, they just recently selling their home, and they they have a lot of offers coming in, and actually their home price actually increased. Um, do you have a moment? Maybe we can have a quick chat. Um, and I know I know you're still interested in selling your home. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, we're kind of looking at it, but I'm just not, you know, sure when the right time would be. But, you know, eventually we do want to do something. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I hear that you are, you are looking, but you don't know when is the right time. Uh, this is why it's very important for us. Uh, maybe we can have a quick chat, maybe 20 to 30 minutes uh, to go over whether or not this is actually the right time for you to sell your home. I do see that there, there is home near your area that has been sold higher than the listing price. And there is opportunity out there. And I, I believe that we can work some type of magic together and maybe uh, come up with uh, some good plans. Um, do you have a quick chat? Maybe we can have a quick chat sometime tomorrow. Are you available tomorrow? Yeah, so, okay, we'll stop right there. So good job, Dewey. I know you're, you're freestyling it, but the great thing, Dewey, is that you're just using the framework, right? So I want you to see that even though Dewey doesn't maybe have a ton of experience calling sellers or working with listings, what I want you guys to see is when you just follow the framework, right? And it, it works, right? You follow that framework, it leads you down to that, that appointment. So if this was a seller, then the goal would be, hey, you know, is there a good time for me to come by and we can chat? I can check out your house. I can give you, a, you know, some more information. I can, you know, let you know what we think your home could sell for and at least give you some, some information so you can plan and see if it makes sense, right? That would be more of the call to action. Mm -hmm. um but do a great job on, on just using that framework Thank you. um all right let's get one or two more um to role play let's we'll try a buyer scenario uh who else wants to role play this is your opportunity guys alessandra ready to role play Let's go, let's go. All right, Alessandra, you're following up with me. I'm an old lead in the pond. <clears throat> I was looking for a home in you know, San Jose six months ago. It's an old lead. So you haven't talked to this lead before. This is more you following up. And you read the notes and it looks like I was trying to save up. Uh, I was concerned about the, the rates and the payment and stuff like that. So you're okay. calling to tell me about some good news, new loan programs lower payments, better options, stuff like that. Um, so let's go. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Enrique. Yeah, yeah. Who's this? Hey, Enrique. This is Alessandra Wissello. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Oh, that's great to hear. Um, I was just giving you a call to follow up and see how the home search is going. You inquired a couple months ago, and I just wanted to see how everything's going. Okay. So let's stop right there. Um, so the intro, I want you to remind me of who you are and when we spoke or when we, when I spoke to your company, right? Because Alessandra with Zillow, like that doesn't mean anything to me, right? So I would need you to remind me quickly of like, hey, you spoke to our team six months ago. It looks like you were, you know, looking for a home. Like remind me of the conversation, right? It looks like, you know, you were concerned about the rates and stuff like that. You okay. recall, right? And then, then I don't want you asking how my home search is going. I want you to tell me the exciting news that you have for me, right? Just get to the point. Yeah. Tell me about the exciting news you have for me. And then you want to offer me a time for us to chat or for us to meet or for us to jump on a consultation to tell you more, something like that, right? Okay. Let's try that one more time. Hey, Enrique. Yeah. Who's this? Hey. 
Hey, this is Alessandra with Zillow. Um, you were uh, you inquired. You were talking to my team a couple months ago. Um, you inquired on one two three Main Street, and you mentioned to our, one of our teammates that you were concerned about the interest rates. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I I remember. I think I spoke to someone. Yeah, this was this was you know before the holidays. Correct. Yes. So great news, Enrique, um, how we have been getting our buyers now and with this in with this market is um, we have we have um, been doing the buy down rate. I don't, do you know what that means? No, no. What 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 is that? So that's just uh, usually uh, what we've been doing is for the sellers um, to pay the closing. Uh, fuck, I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's, uh, I know we're putting you on the spot. So I think what I would do is I would keep it very general, right? I would keep yeah. it very general. I would say like, Hey, you know, there's a new program, a new loan program where we've been able to help clients get lower interest rates, you know, by working, by getting credits from the seller. I just did that right now. And I, I don't know. I just blinked. Yeah. Keep it very simple. Right. Yeah. Because remember, like you don't want to overcomplicate it. You want to, I feel uh, like I was more, overcomplicating yeah, it. Simple, simple, a little more clear. Like, hey, there's a new loan program that came out and it's been helping people get lower rates. Like that's as simple as you can do it, right? You don't have to say buy down. You don't have to say, yeah. you can say new loan program, right? Um, and that this is some advice for everybody else, right? Like when you're talking to people, remember two, one buy down and all those terms, like we know what that means because we're in the business. But when you're talking to the consumer, like they can get confused like with all this real estate jargon. So pretend you're talking to like a three-year-old, right? And try to make it really simple, right? New loan program, lower interest rate, lower payment, right? Exciting news. Wanted to tell you more about that, right? Um, all right, let's start all over. Let's just do one more time. Um, so Enrique, there's a new loan program um, that I, what, what this means, it's, it helps buyers just like yourself um, by the interest rate. So instead of getting right now um, a 6% on an interest rate, you can buy it to a four or a five. Okay. So let me stop you right there. So when you say, when you say buy the interest rate, even that's confusing, right? Like, I don't, what do you mean by the interest rate, right? So what I want you to say when you're, when you're, remember your goal is to just hook them and try to get them to meet. And then on the, on the appointment, we're going to go into detail of what it means and how to explain it. So I would, instead of saying buy the interest rate, I would just say it's a new loan program that helps you get lower interest rates and lower payments than what's out there right now. Right. Cause you, you don't want to put yourself into like a, a, a position where you're confusing them a little bit. And if I didn't know, if I was a first time buyer, and I didn't know anything like it would sound a little confusing if you started saying buy, buy the interest rate and all this stuff. So I would even keep it more, even more simple than what you're doing. So let's try that one more time and then we're going to wrap up. Uh, there's a new loan that helps you get a lower interest oh, yeah. rate and um, a lower interest rate. Oh, and a lower payment. And a lower payment. Yeah. And now, now go into what, you know, what you're trying to do, right? I wanted to see. You had some time, right? I just wanted to check in and see if um, you have some time to go over the um, go over the programs that we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely would like to see, you know, how I can get a lower interest rate, you know, or lower payment. You know, what, what else is out there? Perfect, Enrique. Um, what time and day works best for you? Okay, so... In closing, guys, remember, you want to ask, you want to tell them what times you have. Hey, just give them two options, morning or afternoon, right? I have availability yeah. um, either um, tomorrow at 7 or Friday in the mornings. Yeah, so so remember, you always ask me, like, hey, this mornings or afternoons, you know, what we can do is meet on, you know, Zoom. It'll be a quick meeting. We'll go over the different options with you. Does mornings or afternoons work, right? Does and mornings then, or afternoons work best for you? Uh, afternoons definitely work better uh, for me. And then you give me two days. Hey, I have Tuesday or I have Thursday afternoon. Uh, okay. So I have either tomorrow or Friday. What, what works best for you? 
Uh, maybe tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. Um, do you have some time like around four or five? Yeah, five, let's shoot for 5 p.m. If anything changes, feel free to reach out. Uh, in the meantime, I will be sending you my personal contact information and a Zoom link as well with all the information that we're going to go over. Cool, perfect. All right. So there we have it, guys. I know. So this is, you know, we're, we're freestyling right now, right? So you're on the spot, right? So it's, you know, this is, this is the way we practice at. So what I want you guys to do now in closing is I'll post this framework in Slack, but I want you now to start thinking of all your conversations like this, right? When you're calling old leads, there needs, you need to quickly remind them of who you are, when we last spoke, what the context of the conversation was, and then you need to give them some sort of good news, right? There needs to be some sort of angle, some sort of good news, a reason why they would want to talk to you. And then you want to close it out with the next step, whether it's meet in person, whether it's, you know, set up a consultation, whether it's go tour a property, whatever that next step is, you follow that format, right? No more just like, hey, are you still looking to buy or how's your home search coming along, right? Because 99% of the agents out there, they say, how's your home search? Or they say, are you still looking to buy or sell, right? We want to stand out. We want to be different. We want to give people something of value that will give them a reason to want to meet with us. All right, guys. So uh, let's get after it. Let me know if you need anything. Hope you guys got some value today. And we'll see you again in the next training.